demonstrating what they were doing. We are alive and well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Man, when you got the joy of the Lord in your strength, you don't know what to say. God's good. Is that a good thing to say is God is good? But you can't say it unless you got it in you. Amen. That's right. God good? All the time. You can't say it unless God's in you. Amen. Part of it is stirred in you. Is God good? All the time. Hey, man, man. Let me tell you what. When you're doing the will of the Lord, it gets more and more exciting. Okay, now it's my turn. Thank you. It gets more exciting than you can ever, ever, ever believe. <coughs> Battles, struggles, or whatever you want to say, just let God be God. In fact, the, try, the trying, you know what it does? It develops endurance. How many need endurance? Amen. Endurance develops character. How many need character? Amen. Not a character, character. How many need hope? Put them all together, and you got hope. And I'll tell you something, hope ain't going to let you down. Man, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Had a good day. Went to prison today to uh, just try to follow up and, and some of the girls up, just, you know, check them and see how they're going, let them know that whatever, because God sent me. But you know, when God sends you, it's just amazing. Unbelievable. Anyway, I went out to see Brown. She was one I wanted to see. And she's on... 26 yards. Anyway, I went down to see her. And I've been out there for something like 26, 27 years. And I walk, they finally let me in. I got the gates locked now. And I'm walking on the yard, and one of the guards was, was going up to her house. And here comes the DW. Who do you think you are? And I said, well, I'm a volunteer Catholic. And uh, I just came to see this girl. And I, you know, I said, you know, I'm trying to show me. She said, well, you know, I run this place. <laughs> and I said, what? Well, okay. He said, well, you can see her, but you're going to have to go up and see her in visitation. Well, bring her up. I said, okay. I'm going to argue with you. And so that happened. So I'm heading up there. And by the time I just get past the fence, here she comes. So, you know, I wanted to tell her that, you know, her class has been straightened around, it's been paid for and everything. Come to find out, she lives on 24 yard. She moved. I don't know if you understand what I'm just saying or not. She's the only one walking on the yard. She, I was, I was there to have a whole lot of time. I wanted to see her. They didn't send her up. God did. You understand what I'm saying? No, do you really understand what I'm saying? She said, "Well, I fell down and hurt my foot, and I was going to medical." <laughs> you, can, you can be you, you can live by your kind of faith your unbelief I don't know about all that divinely important that was God let me tell you something right on time I mean that just don't happen she was the only one on the earth because it was cow time so praise the Lord what do you think about all that I want to run out and got a chance to Thank you, God. Andrea. Yep. She's got she's in prison. And she's if she she's all nervous. If she she's having trouble with fractions. If she passes her mandatory, she'll be out next month. Yeah. And then she's all fired up. You know, the divine court. Yeah. Terry too, or Terry, excuse me, Terry One's daughters out there. Brittany. Well, I'd see her, man, she's on fire, <coughs> just serving the Lord, believing God. You know, let me tell you something. Just let God be God. No matter where you are, all things work together for good. Amen. 
If you need to go to prison, then praise God, let him put you in prison. If you need to go to the woodshed, then praise God, let him take you to the woodshed. That's what I'm talking about. If you need to be a spoiled brat, he's going to unspoil you. Unless you ain't going to let him. If you don't let him, then you're going to be a born and spoiled brat. You're going to be in big time trouble. I'm not talking about that. I'm telling you something, God is working. Finally, unbelievable. When you can, you can just see his hand. Amen? Now, you guys are going to have to trust me. What on earth are you talking about? Well, the Bible says he's given some prophecy, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for any kind of God. In other words, promotion doesn't come from the West. East to West comes from God. He raised up and puts down another one, right? Now, if God calls you and puts you in a position, you think he's going to give you the wisdom you need, or he needs, or whoever, or anybody needs to run that thing? So don't you think we just let God run the thing through the people he's called to run this thing? Okay. Now, if, if, if you're diligently to seek him, well, no matter what position you have, he's called you to, he's going to guide you. How many believe that? No, that's, I must pass for that. You know what he'd say? Then stay out of my business. <laughs> Can you tell other people, stay out of my business? Amen. If God's called you. Now, he said, I didn't say that doesn't mean that you can break the rules. No, no, that's not your business. That's the leadership he put over you if you bust the rules. You know what I'm saying? But as far as what God's called you to, do. Other people just need to stay out of what he's called you to do. Yes. Very simply. Is that the truth? Amen. And I mean, God's called every one of us to do something. <coughs> now we're people, we're family, we're brothers and sisters, and we're mom, squabbling, all this kind of stuff. Amen? Amen? And then here's the thing I really want to get at. Now God's put in my heart something today that if you're open, you're going to understand it. And I am. Just recently, God's making some changes here. Now we've turned the leadership over of the ladies to the ladies. And there's a lot of things that we're doing that we don't understand. And it's it's a it's a thing. No, no, before you start laughing, it's a thing that I know in my heart. This is what God's got us to do. Now we we're working things out, and we got David here. He's kind of helping us to put the whole thing together. And something else that really hit me tonight. And here's where you're gonna have to trust me. Vicky, where are you? Come here. Yay! I'm to say one thing and I'm going to put over there. This has never been more real to me than anything that God's ever shown me in my life. They have a different culture than we have. Just like Ladies think different than we do. Amen. <laughs> so if I want you to catch what I'm saying, just really have to trust me this thing. Because we can't treat everybody the same as we think, man. Don't get me wrong, we got old people accountable, but we can't kill them. Amen. <laughs> now, if we're going into somebody, if, if, if we go into Rome, what do we need to do? Act like the Romans do. Okay. Now, if we go into the Indian territory, the reservation, what do we need to do? Come on, Pastor Walt asked me to um, convey to you tonight is just, um, yes, that there are differences. Know, but we're all brothers and sisters of Christ, you know. Amen. We're all seeking the Lord, you know. We just, you know, the Lord has put it on my heart, you know, to help build that bridge, you know, and put Pastor Walt in my life. And I'm here for a reason, for, for God's purpose, you know, to serve Him. And so He just wanted me to tell you a little bit um, about some of the differences so you would understand, you know. Um, a simple handshake um, is looked at by some of our people as, you know, if you shake my hand too hard, some of the elders consider that aggressive. So it's a light touch. And they mean, and, and, and to you, you may think it's weakness, but to us, it's a sign of respect. And to many of our people, they won't look you in the eye because it's a sign of disrespect. 
and in your culture, if you don't, someone doesn't look in your eyes, you think they're disrespecting you. But it's just something, you know, those are just little things, and yet they mean a lot to our people, you know. A lot of our people, um, our men are in prison, in jail, on drugs, they're not there. A lot of our children are being raised by a single parent like me. Some of these households have five or six children. So they're being raised by women who are strong women. You know, and it's not that we mean any um, aggression towards any men, you know, but it's just that we've had to be strong. We've had to be mommies and daddies like me, and we've had to do these things for our children and raise them to the best of our ability. And it's just something that we, you know, we need to let you know, I need to let you know, you know, so that there's no misunderstandings. And there are other things too, but it's, you know, it's something that we've talked about. And uh, Pastor Wall has asked me to come into a staffing meeting to let people know because you know, these are things that they need to know. We need to convey so that there's no misunderstandings, no hurt feelings, you know, and, and vice versa. We need to know about your people. We need to know what's respectful, disrespectful, you know, and, and so that we can build that bond and build that bridge. Because when you come down to it, really, a lot of my people are hurting, just like a lot of you. And they've been through a lot of things you've been through. You know. And if you can get in there and talk to them, you'll find out that really, you know, there's, there's, there's not a whole lot of difference. You know. We hurt, you hurt. You know, we struggle with alcohol, we struggle with drug, drug, drug addiction, murder. You know, we, we struggle with all of those things. Our world has become just like your world on the outside. You know, we're on a reservation. But that's pretty much it. You know, yes, there's a boundary there, but we suffer from so many things like everybody else says. You know, behavioral health issues, you know, living on welfare, second and third generation welfare, you know, people dropping out of high school, people dropping out of college, transportation issues, job issues, you name it, you know. So please just keep that in mind when you go down to the reservation. You know, we, we love you guys, we want you there, and we need you there. You know. God bless you. Jesse Grimmett. Yeah. Woo! Everything you guys are going to have to question. Yeah. Now, we've got rules. <coughs> he broke one of the rules, and so we had to put him off for a little while. And he's like, oh, if you ever got a haircut, he can come back. <laughs> okay, he came back dirty. Hear me out. Back, he couldn't pass the smoke test. But you know what he did? At an Indian ceremonial, what do we call it? It's a, it's a, a smoke, it, it's praying. It's pretty much praying. It's a little offering. Uh, we smoke out the peace pipe. It helps carry our prayers to, to the Lord. It, we, to be honest, man, when they say we're godless, we ain't godless, man. It's just we don't pray to the sun. We pray straight up, and tobacco carries our prayers up to the Father. And like I said, I'm still traditional. I still do a lot of, a lot of traditional things, and you know, I mean, but other than that, man, I, I said, oh, I failed was because well, I was praying. Right. Now, your heart is to finish this program, isn't it? Yes, it is. Now, when I heard that, this is part of the ceremony. He's not completely, just like the rest of us, sanctified yet. Now, he came back dirty. The first thing we do, because of our culture, the way we think, is he came back dirty. He's been out there smoking, messing up. No. He was down there. He still believes in that. Now, are we ready to accept? Now, we don't agree with their beliefs, of course. We believe in Jesus. God's working in him. He's a work in progress. To me, my decision would be, let's take him back in. Amen. He wants to make it. Now, I've been trying to explain this for years. Now, the guy really put this in my heart. How do you hold people accountable without killing them? How do you help them to grow? And if you seek God and realize, as soon as she says, she's a warrior. And she admits she's not perfect. 
Our people aren't perfect. We're not perfect. Amen. But we think so differently. And if they're trying to do something that they've done all their ancestry for generations, and still, you know, my mother was a Catholic. She died a Catholic, but she was a Christian. Now, I did not agree with a lot of the things, we still don't, a lot of things the Catholics do. And I first went home, and I first got saved, I went home and told her she's going to hell. <laughs> and all of a sudden, God said, well, who kept you all these years? Who sacrificed you? And besides, whose prayer got you saved? Amen. My mother was a born-again Christian. She decided to stay in the Catholic Church. I didn't question that after God shut me up. Now, he's given his life to Christ. He wants to grow. Let, let God be God. God's got to be the not us. This is why now we're going to go through our reservations. We certainly don't want to offend them. We just need to preach the gospel and let God be God. Amen. And be there for them like they're here for us. Now, Vicky's stuck in the middle. In fact, she's registered back in school. And, and when are you going to graduate? In May? May she's going to have her BA degree. And if you were here you know, a few months ago, you heard her testimony. I mean, she's been through it all. By the way, there's a lot of stuff that goes down on at that reservation you don't even want to know about. A lot of us, some of you that jail and prison, don't even compare with what they do down there. But that's their business. That's their ways. And we All we want to do is take the light in the darkness. Is that, is that right? And let it shine. What's on your heart? You want to... Oh, we all do that. <laughs> you want to fight this thing out? You want to make it through this program? Yes, I do. Yes, I've got. That's why I came back and wasn't trying to lie about that. I mean, it's not like I was out to just smoke through that, but like I said, I'm still traditional. I still do a lot of, a lot of traditional things. <coughs> misunderstanding or understanding whatever what the ladies are doing it's the same thing exactly and a lot of you guys don't know what the rules are or what they're supposed to be we're working on that he said how why what have you been doing all this time trust in god waiting on him not setting down something that's so concrete that you can't bend that it can't change because we got to be able to help these people Amen. we're going to have to bend If it's a rigid, you bend and you crack, let's go get some WD-40 or something. No, what you need is the Holy Ghost. And that's the oil of it, amen? Vicki, what do you got? The last thing that's on your heart. I'm just, I'm so happy that, you know, Jesse's coming back into the program, you know. He was out for a month with me, you know, and he did, he did really well. Not just because he's my tribal member, my friend, but you know what? Um, this man's been in prison, you know, and I trusted him in my home, you know. 
rob from me, you know, to be steal my car. I can't trust some of my relatives in my home with my car. Come on, okay, you know? <laughs> get up in the morning and he had made coffee and breakfast and I'm going to miss it. It's a good brother for Christ. Where's the cooks at, Ron? Put it work. Yes, give the word a good thing. Well, I just come to share from my heart and share what the Lord's put on my heart because what he's done in my life is an amazing thing and what he's doing in your life is going to be even better than what he's done in my life it's what he's brought me through and what he's brought you through we cannot even fathom we cannot even fathom what he, has yet, what he has for us. What is the reproach in your life, the reproach of Egypt in your life, spiritually speaking? What's the shame, what's the blame, and what's the disgrace that you have in your hearts that's holding you back from the love of Christ, or that's holding you back from even growing in the, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ? The shame, the blame in my life, and the disgrace was, was what I put my parents through and what I put myself through. Amen and all the drugs that follow that. And I don't even have to worry about that no more because I have a Savior that's brought me from that and that says you don't have to worry about it no more. That everything that you worry about is not of me, it's from the, other, the enemy, the devil. So if you're worrying about something today, don't worry about it because God's got your back. Jesus Christ paid the price for it and the Holy Spirit lives in your heart if you ask Christ into your life. You don't have to worry about a thing when Christ is in it all. What we have to worry about is if we're saved or not. If you're not saved in this room tonight, you have the opportunity every night when you come here. There's Wednesday night, there's Saturday night, and there's Sunday morning if you want Jesus Christ. Or you can come through here and ask the pastors to pray for you and ask Jesus into your life and to set you free from the bondages of sin in your life. You don't have to go back to Egypt no more. You can come to the promised land and come... Let, let, let the Holy Spirit wash your heart and anoint you. Because when we're anointed, we're appointed. And when we're not anointed, we're disappointed. Yes. Right. I, just, I just wanted to um, read a couple of things I had wrote down. It says, confounded is to damn. We're not confounded no more if we're in Jesus Christ. Because Christ never damned us. We damn ourselves. You must let God roll away the reproach of Egypt off your life, spiritually speaking. When you wake up, what is the first thing in your life which you think about? Is it Jesus Christ? The drugs that you want to go back to? The, the, what do you want to go back to when you wake up? Is it just Jesus Christ in your heart? You say, Holy Spirit, work on my heart. I'm tug you're tugging at my heart. And you, let your, and you let Jesus Christ die for me, the only begotten one of the Father which he shed his blood for all of us on that cross. If we don't mention the cross, it's another Jesus that we're speaking about. But when we mention the cross, Jesus Christ is the true and living God. Because the cross is where it's at. When we come to the cross and throw every burden and everything that down that was in our lives, then Jesus Christ can use us and set us free from everything. And then one more, one more thing is that the reproach of Egypt of my life that I thought it was in my life was in this bullet. But this bullet ha has, has a background to it. And it says, Jesus Christ has set you free from all the law of sin and death. Now, I'm, I'm, now I can sit at the right hand of the throne of Jesus Christ and the Father God, which they are one in me and I in him. For if I live with him, he'll, he also lives with me. But if I disown him, he will disown me. So I just choose Jesus Christ today. And I ask you guys to open up your hearts and ask Jesus Christ to fulfill the needs of your hearts and the desires of what you want. And if you do that, Jesus Christ will do what he needs to do to get accomplished that. He's not a man that he can lie, Amen. but if you disown him, he will disown you. Amen. 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 Of course, different cultures, 
This is Jesse years ago when he first came here. Now he's confused. God has changed. He's been here. He's gone back, up, down, round, round. And by the way, the scars he's got on his face is tattoo removal. God's put that in his heart to go through the process, and it's a long process. But you know what? He's willing. I'll tell you, that was probably the, the best short sermon I can ever remember hearing in a long, long time. It was the most impressive. Whatever he did in his heart. And this was not planned. I asked him about five to ten minutes before the service. It was a couple of months ago, or a month or so ago. He said, like, give us testimony. I said, why don't you give it such a night? I forgot. <coughs> That's why you got to trust me. Okay, if I forget, don't worry about it. God put it in my heart for him tonight. Amen. And I say, this is a lot better tonight than it would have been. Just when, it, when the time, you know, when he thought the time was right. How many understand what I'm talking about? Can we just let God be God? He is a good one. Amen. Amen. And man, I'm telling you, so how, many, how long have you been here? Almost four years, almost five, off and on. I would have been here five years, but the struggles and all that don't even compare to where I've been here now. I've been clean and sober for two years, and that's the longest stretch of my whole life. You see, New Mexico, he's got the neatest dad you'd ever believe. His dad will drive all the way over here. When he graduates, he's got a twin brother that struggled a little bit, and he's paying the prices in prison. They've been up and down, and his brother he wasn't a gangbanger like him. But that doesn't matter what the past. That's what we need to do is just forget the past. Forget the cultural differences. Amen. Respect the cultural differences. Amen. And just let the Holy Spirit take off your tattoos. Heal you from the inside. Amen? Amen. God bless you, Benjamin. Let's do it. By the way, he's a head of I think, I think, Benjamin, you head of He's doing a great, great job. Great job Amen. If we can get the ushers. The ushers. <laughs> <coughs> Come up. Let's, let's quickly take our offering. Somebody called me today and said, we've got a good size offering. It's going to probably take place this Sunday. But let me tell you what. You're the offering, and I'm the offering God wants. But everybody like said, yes. he's dealing with you. But I guess what he's trying to say is everybody put themselves in the offering basket. That's truly what we need to do. Would you let me? Let me preach, okay? Anyway, it's fun to do. If you're so full of starch, and you're so rigid. You got your certain beliefs. I'm going to tell you something. Your beliefs are wrong. I don't tell me that. Well, then you're going to have to trust me. I'm going to tell you that. There's no question. Your beliefs are wrong. You're prejudiced. You don't understand I'm not prejudiced? Well, think what you want to think. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Because God keeps it in my heart. We just need to let him be him. And I know because I go through it every day. I do some things that are so wrong, don't even know it. Didn't even know it for a long, long time. Every day I've changed it. Amen. Amen. How about Amen. you? Now, so what God wants us to do is be willing to give. There's other people. He's bringing people here like you have no idea. The talent, the purpose, how he's built them for this for years, just like he did Moses. And that's you. So quit being silly. Let God develop you into what he wants you to be. But you got to be willing to give. Amen. Your finances, yourself, it all belongs to God anyway. Amen. If you listen to him, you're going, that's the shortcut. He's going to bless your life. He's going to use you. Multiply the joy and the peace that's in your heart. Amen. If not, okay, run your life. <laughs> anyway, whatever God puts in your heart tonight, we made it through this year in a black. Yeah. 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 I don't need a whole lot to live in my whole thing. You're right ahead, you just sit back, keep on judging. If you knew, well, I don't know about all that. Well, I do. What a blessing it has been to have the power of God controlling church on the street. Amen. Heavenly Father, you know what the needs are, and I pray each and every one of us will just open our pockets up in our heart, and we'll give both to you. 
Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Thank you.